Hello, and thanks for watching. Over the next few minutes, I'll be walking you through how to use our equity waterfall model with monthly periods and IRR hurdles, and how to incorporate this module into your own DCF. And so let's get started. I am using version 1.4 of the model. You're likely using this version or something newer than it. So you might notice some uh, slight uh, differences but fundamentally the model is the same. So we move first to the partnership returns and monthly tab. This is a module, meaning it is not standalone. It's meant to be uh, used with your existing discounted cash flow model. Uh, and so in order to show you that, I have opened up my residential land development model, which here at the very bottom you'll notice uh, sums up our net levered cash flow line. And this, this is effectively the net cash flow available to distribute to the partners in a real estate venture. And, and so we have these two, one, one full DCF model, but without the uh, calculating partnership level returns. And then we have the waterfall model, which doesn't uh, calculate any of the property level returns, only the partnership level returns. So I just, we just need to merge these two together. And so what I'll do is I'll just go ahead I'll pull one window slightly to the side. I'll click on the worksheet here within the equity waterfall model that I wanna pull over, click and grab, and just pull it into my full DCF model. And now I have my property level cash flows on one tab, my partnership level returns on the other. Now the next step I, I want to do here is link the two together. And there's a, a few things to keep in mind. For, for now, I'm going to ignore this section, this is where we model out our partnership structure, but I'll want to link the analysis begin month and year, and then the levered before tax cash flows from our DCF over to our partnership level returns to our equity waterfall model. So let's start then with the, let's actually start with our uh, levered cash flow. So we come back here again at the bottom, net levered cash flow. Now one slight nuance here is if you have a period that begins with zero, Excel ignores that for purposes of, of IRR uh, times 12. However, if you're using an XIRR, Excel expects there to be a negative value in this first period. And if there isn't, then it either uh, outputs an error or it doesn't output the correct value. And so what we notice here is really our very first period is month one. We come back here, we have a month zero, but this month zero will effectively be month one uh, if from our uh, property level cash flow. So I'll start by just simply choosing that cell, making it equal to this cell, hit enter, and then I'll just copy this out to the right. And what you'll see is that the cash flows end month 27, and then the model automatically knows that because these cash flows are empty, to not make any calculations based on them. So we've linked first our uh, net levered cash flow. The next thing we wanna link then is the analysis begin month and year. Now you'll notice month zero on our equity waterfall is the, is the very first period. And we come back here, the very first period, that's really month one on this, is October 2018. So I'm just gonna come over here and link this to that October 2018, okay? And now the cash flows are lined up correctly. Now, if you wanna really make it equal, we just go ahead and actually right here, just change this to a one, and all the rest of these will line out correctly, okay. And so now that our cash flows from our property level DCF have been linked to our equity waterfall model, now it's just a matter of uh, performing our, or entering our uh, partnership structure, uh, contributions, promote structure, any pref uh, uh, model out, any fees that are being paid to the sponsor, and then the model will output the return. So let's start here. Let's imagine in this scenario, actually, I think I already have it here. Uh, no, we don't. So. We have a sponsor who's sponsoring the deal, and then we have LP investor or, or investors. And let's imagine in this scenario that the sponsor comes up with 10% of the required equity to do this deal. The LP uh, comes up with the balance. 
that there is a preferred return of 12% and the partners are distributed uh, pro rata based on their ownership share. So 10% to the sponsor, 90% to the LP. And then above that, there's a promote. The partnership promotes the sponsor above that preferred return. So let's imagine that from a 12 to an 18, the sponsor receives a 10% promote, which results in a distribution to the sponsor of 19%, right? 10% promote plus the sponsor owns 10% of uh, the partnership's remaining cash flow or 10% of the 90% or in other words, the sponsor is distributed 19% in this first tier. Let's imagine a 20% promote above an 18 and then above a 25, the sponsor gets a 30% promote or 37% of the distributable cash flow. Uh, then we come down and we have any asset management fees, any acquisition fees, we'll just assume no. Uh, now, if there were, those should be positive values because we take whatever uh, uh, available cash flow to distribute here and we subtract the any fees and we have two options for fees here. Uh, but again, I'll just set those to zero such that the lever before tax cash flow is the adjusted lever before tax cash flow or what is actually distributed to the two partners. And the result then uh, is these cash flows flow through the first hurdle, which is a preferred return and return of capital. And once the LP has achieved this 12%, in this case, 12% preferred return, and remember these are IRR hurdles, which means that the LP must both receive some required monthly return plus receive a return of capital in order to hit this IRR hurdle. After which the distributions are made um, in such a way that the sponsor receives an outsized share of the distributable cash flow. In this case, once the LP hits an 18, then it flows into hurdle three. Once the LP hits a 25, it flows into the final hurdle. Uh, and as a result here, you see distributions to contributions from the LP, total profit of the LP results in a 2.74 equity multiple and a 187 IRR, which on a short term deal like this, what did I say? It was less than three years, 28 months. Yeah. Uh, you're going to have a high IRR because of the, the short time period of the investment. And then the sponsor contributes 173,000, uh, is distributed 1.682 million, receives 1.5 million in profit, uh, 634 IRR and a 9.7 equity multiple. So that's how you use the um, equity waterfall model with monthly periods and IRR hurdles. Let me know if you have any questions.